diverse direction God will take us to. Hallelujah. I believe God that it's a word for somebody today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Quickly, let's go to Revelation chapter 3 and verse 8. Um, media, put it up so we can read from one translation. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 8. Revelation 3 and verse 8. Revelation 3, 8. Are we there? All right. Every one of us, can we read from the screen? Want to go? I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Hallelujah. Preach to your neighbor. Say, my doors are open. Preach to your neighbor. Turn to the other neighbor on the other side. Say, my doors are open. Can you preach it louder? Say, my doors are open. Ah, uh, do you believe that word you just spoke? Ah, uh, maybe it's just my word. Say, my doors are open. Say it again. Say, my doors are open. Hallelujah. Sit down. If you believe that word, then you will see the manifestation. Hallelujah. If you believe the word you just preach to your neighbor, then you will see the manifestation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please sit down. The Bible said, oh, Katomaha, he spoke to the church in Philadelphia. He said, because you have not denied my name, even though you have little strength, even though you have little strength, God knows your strength. God knows your strength. God knows your strength. God knows your strength. You know, there is one thing about God that we must emulate. If he said your little strength, it means your weakness is bigger. But God did not regard the weakness. He rather mentioned the little strength. Somebody, not, can you put that scripture again? He said, even though your strength is small, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Thou hast a little strength, a little strength. He didn't say you have bigger weakness. No, God does not mention your weakness. He's looking at what he wants in your life. That little strength is what is about to empower. It's what is about to enlarge. He said, I know. He said, and I have set before you an open door. And he said, no man can shut it. I came to speak to somebody. Your doors are open. I said, your doors are open. Your doors are open. God is speaking to the church in Baltimore. He said, your doors are open. Can you say to yourself one more time, say, my doors are open. Say, my doors are open. Everyone has got doors, not one door. Every one of us, we have doors. There are many doors that we are trying to assess. God says, I should tell you, those doors are open. In Revelation 4, verse 1, he said, After this, I looked at Makata. Behold, an open door. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was open. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was what? Open. It wasn't closed. It was open. I said, your door is open. Your doors are open. In the name of Jesus. In Hosea chapter 2, and verse 15, he said, And we give her her vineyards. From thence and the valley of Akko for a door of hope. There is a door of hope. There are people when they get to a bad situation, they kill themselves. Why there are people, no matter where you find yourself, there is an assurance you are bouncing back. Why? There is a door of hope that is open unto you. Oh Matasha. In Psalm 78 and verse 23, he said, Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven. And open what the doors of heaven. Colossians chapter 4, verse 3. He said, With all praying also for us, that God will open unto us a door of utterance. Hallelujah. That God will open unto us. Colossians 4, verse 3. That God will open unto us a door of utterance. Hallelujah. That we may make bold. That we may speak with confidence. To speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds. Hallelujah. Your doors are open. In Acts chapter 14, verse 26, it said, When they were come and he had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door. I say, Your doors are open. 
in the name of Jesus. In Psalm 24 and verse 7, the Bible says, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, O ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. And verse 8, the Bible said the gate spoke, the door spoke. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Verse 9, he still said, lift up your head, O ye gates, be ye lifted, O ye everlasting door. There are doors that your father could not access. There are doors your mother could not access. There are doors that others in your family could not access. But God says I should tell somebody, those doors are open to you in the name of Jesus. What your predecessors, those who went ahead of you, they could not access. God says receive it now in a hurry. God says receive it now in a hurry in the name of Jesus. He said, I have set before you, before you what? And open. And he said something. He said, no man can shut. Hallelujah. He said, I have set before you an open door. And no man can shut it. Isn't that wonderful? God says, I set before you an open door. No man. He said, no man. No man can shut it. When God says it, he does it. God cannot lie. Titus chapter 1 and verse 2. God cannot lie. Hallelujah. Titus 1, 2. God in hope of eternal life. With God cannot lie. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18. Hebrews 6, 18. He said, and by two immutable things, whereby God cannot lie. That by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. As he said it, yes. Will he do it? Yes. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Malachi 3 and verse 6. I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Hallelujah. In Kobadasha. Numbers 23, 19. He said, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. As he said it, will he not do it? Why is it that we are still struggling? God said, I have set before you an open door. And we know God cannot lie. Why are we still struggling with open doors? With closed doors? Why? Why are we struggling? Why does it look like God is lying to us? He said, I have set before you open door. No man can close it. So even the doors you thought they are closed, they are not closed, they are open. But there is something I saw as I began to look at God's word. Can you adjust this mic a bit? Hallelujah. He said he has set an open door. No man can close it. How come we are struggling to access those doors we cannot? And the Holy Spirit said unto me, he said, men have become doors to block the open door he has set for us. He said, there are men who have made themselves doors. That is why the door spoke in Psalm 24 and verse 7. He said, ah, shakaha. When the Bible said, lift up your head, all you get, and be lifted, all you everlasting door. He said, who is the king of glory? In 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. Can you add some little bit of light on this mic? 1 Corinthians 16 and 9. Apostle Paul said, he said, great doors have been opened unto me. Effectual doors. He said, but there are many adversaries. Hallelujah. A great door and effectual is open unto me. And there are many adversaries. The door is open. Men are standing by the door. The door is open. But there are people that have made themselves a door. I came because God instructed me in Acts chapter 16 and verse 26. The Bible says, and suddenly there was an earthquake in the prison. It said, and every door opened. Everyone's door opened. Every band were loose. I came by the power of the Holy Ghost. Anyone that has made themselves a door to resist your progress, I decree they are blown away by fire. I blow them away by fire. I blow them away by fire. 
Anyone that has made themselves a closed door to resist your life, I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost, we blow them away by fire. I say we blow them away by fire. In the name of Jesus. Open, but there are many advisors. Men have become doors. Men are standing now. We see the men, we think the, the door is still closed. It's men that are blocking the path. Today, God will approve them. I said we approve them by fire. I said we approve them by fire. I said we approve them by fire. I don't know that door you have been trying to assess and it looks like it cannot open. The door is open. There is a man standing there. There is a strong woman standing there. I send the wind of God. It shall uproot them by fire. 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 In the name of Jesus. Your door of fruitfulness is opened by fire. Your doors of settlement in this land is opened by fire. Any man standing at the door, I decree they are uprooted. I say we are uprooted. Somebody say suddenly, say earthquake of God, uproot them. Say uproot them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What is a door? A door is an access point. A door means access. Hallelujah. A door means what? Access. A door means what? Access. What is another meaning for access? Opportunity. Hallelujah. A door is what? Opportunity. Praise the Lord. Access or opportunity. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is telling us he has given us access. He has given us opportunities. But there are men standing to block them. But today we will approve them. I say today we will approve them. In the name of Jesus. In Mark chapter 1 verse 33, the Bible says, all the city was gathered together at the door. All the city was gathered together where? At the door. In Mark 11 verse 4, the Bible said, and they went their way, and there was a court. And they went their way and found the court tied by the door. A court was tied by a place of opportunity was tied by a place of access. He said, by the door, without in a place where two ways met. And they lose it. Now the door, it was by the door of two opportunities. It was by the door of two opportunities. There are many people, there are things you never saw when you were in Africa. There are some problems you did not have when you were not better in life. There are things that arise when your life starts looking better. Because the enemy is trying to tie you down in the place of your opportunities. There are people, before you got to this place, there are things you could do. Right now, you cannot do what you were supposed to be doing. Because the enemy is trying to limit you in the place of opportunity. Am I speaking to somebody here? A court tied at the door where two ways meet. Two opportunities. Opportunity here, opportunity there. And tied in the middle. Let me talk to us. In life, whatever we become is as a result of opportunity. The best players we see on TV are not the best players in life. There are some players in the village. If you put them on the TV, even Ronaldo will pay to watch them play. There are some singers in the village, in the singers on the street. Who don't have nobody that can showcase them. They have no opportunity. There are people who are more educated and sound. They don't have opportunity. The people you see out there, they are not the best. It's opportunity that gives them. So for a man to be tight in the place of opportunity is an error. That is why I was angry in my spirit. When God was carrying me through the scriptures, I said today, every opportunity God has prepared for you, you shall carry it by fire. Every door he said he opened for you, you shall walk in it in the name of Jesus. I say you will walk in it in the name of Jesus. You will walk in it in the name of Jesus. You will walk in it in the name of Jesus. Two opportunities yet tied in one spot. Two opportunities yet stampede in one spot. I came with a corrosive unction. 
that thing that resisted you, maybe they resisted your father, they resisted your mother. Today they are giving way by fire. I said they give way by fire. I said they give way by fire. In the name of Jesus. Hey, what are open doors? Number one, opportunities, platforms, avenue, uh, you know, that heaven uses for human lifting. Hallelujah. What are open doors? Number one, open doors means opportunities, platforms, avenues that heaven uses for human lifting. Hallelujah. When the door opens, that's how God blesses you. Hallelujah. That's what we call open door. Praise the Lord. Number two, what, is, what, what do we call open door? Supernatural channels for human rising. Supernatural channels for human rising. Hallelujah. Number three, what do we call open doors? What are open doors? Pathway to enjoy abundant grace, expansion, and exposure. Pathway to enjoy abundant grace, expansion, and exposure. Number four, trigger for most needed turnaround. Hallelujah. The trigger for the most needed turnaround. What is your desired turnaround? When your door is open, you walk into it. Hallelujah. The fifth one, launching paths for efficient and sufficient living. Open door. What is an open door? Launching paths for efficient and sufficient living. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to Jesus. We will roar in prayer after this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your doors are open. You will walk in them. Our doors are open. We will walk in them. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If your door must be open, number one, you must have works. Praise the Lord. If your door must be open, number one, you must have works. W-O-R-O-K-S. Works. Hallelujah. For your doors to be open. Jesus told the, the church, he said, I know thy works. Therefore, I have said before you. Your strength was not the problem. I know your strength is small, but I have seen your works. I know your human strength is small, but I have seen your works. Hallelujah. Number one, you must have works. Revelation 3, 8. You can put it up. I know thy works. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee and open. Can you give us an ACSB? Thank you, my father. I know your works because you have limited strength and have kept my word and have not denied my name. Look, I have placed before you an open door. Hallelujah. The primary reason why God placed an open door is because of works. That's the first reason. Works. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In John chapter 5 verse 17, the Bible says, but Jesus answered them. He said, my father walked he tattoo." And I also walk. Hallelujah. John 5, 17. For Jesus answered them, saying what? My father walked here too, and I walk. Praise the Lord. In John chapter 9, verse 4, he said, I must do the work of my father while it is day. Because night cometh when no man walketh. Hallelujah. I must walk the works of, my, of him that sent me. While it is day. The night cometh. Hallelujah. What is the daylight when you are still strong? When you still have life? When there is no life, you can't do anything. This is the time to do the work God brought us here to do. John 14, 11. He said, believe me for my father sent me. Or even at least believe me for the sake of the work I do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. John 14, 11. 14, 11 to 12. He said, believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else at least believe me for the very work sake. Hallelujah. Verse 12, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, 
shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do. Because I go unto my Father. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16, he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. That they may see your good works. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Works. Say, neighbor, what's your work? Hallelujah. Is your work visible? Is your work visible? Hallelujah. What are the works we're talking about? Number one, service unto God. A, service unto God. We don't have too many minutes. Service unto God. A word, service unto God. Service unto God. John 6, 38. Jesus said, he did not come here to be served, but he came to serve. Hallelujah. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Hallelujah. Job 36, verse 11. He said, if they are willing, if they be willing and obedient, if they, be, if, if, if they obey and serve me, rather, shall do what? Spend their days in prosperity and their years in what? Hallelujah. Isaiah 38, from verse 1, the Bible talks about a man called Ezekiah. There was a prophecy that put your house in order because you're going to die. And the man brought his works before God. He said, Father, is this how I'm going to expire? Can stones praise you? I am a praiser. Don't joke with what you do for God. Don't play with what you do for God. It is what speaks for us. Hallelujah. He says, stones cannot serve you. Stones cannot praise you. Hallelujah. Dead men cannot praise you. If I die, you just lost a praiser, a worshiper. And God sent the prophet back. He said, go tell him I've added 15 years. Hallelujah. In 1 Kings chapter 18, reading verse 3 and verse 4, Obadiah was talking about, he said, when Jezebel came to kill prophets, he said, I hid them. I hid them and I fed them. Hallelujah. He said, I hid the prophets of God, for it was so, when Jezebel caught up the prophets of old, what is that? Put it up, please. When, when Jezebel cut off the prophets of old of the Lord, the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took an hundred prophets and hid them by fifty in a cave and fed them. Hallelujah. He fed them. It was his work. It was recorded in his name. Hallelujah. God gave him an avenue. Can God save by himself? Can he deliver by himself? Yes. He gave him an avenue to have things recorded in his name. We should have works that we do for God. Hallelujah. What is tied to your name? Either in this house, before God, that this thing is connected to my name. A particular service. A particular thing we do that is connected with this one is connected to me. Hallelujah. Works in the house of God. Praise the Lord. Service to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Every one of us, we must make sure we have works before God. Service for God. Service unto God. I want us to understand when you serve, you know, in the testimony our sister shared, the person on the other end, they are seeing all kinds of people, they're good, they're bad, they're ugly. People always call customer service with anger in their heart. So before they even respond, you're already talking. So, but this time, the customer service was calm. He said, I don't understand this kind of person that called today. Hallelujah. When you are in service, that's when you know human beings don't, have, don't care about you. No matter how well you are doing things, they say, why didn't you do it the other way? No matter how you try. So when you are in service, nobody should stop your service. Once you are in service unto God, nothing is worth stopping your service. My one prayer I pray is, Lord, help me to give you the kind of service that you deserve. Hallelujah. Nobody, talk, even your own error should not stop you from serving God. Even your weakness should not stop you from serving God. Even the errors of your life, even your mistake should not stop you from serving God. Am I speaking to somebody here? Service unto God is very important. God created us to serve Him. 
He created us. We were made for service. As a matter of fact, he delivered you to serve. He told Pharaoh, he said, let my people go that they may do what? Serve me. So we were, we were brought to light so that we can serve God. I pray God will strengthen us for service in the precious name of Jesus. I pray that offenses will not stop you from service in the name of Jesus. I pray that human behaviors and attitudes will not stop you from serving God in the name of Jesus. People's attitudes and behavior will not stop you from rendering your service unto God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Be service to humanity. There are so many things connected to our service. Both service to God and service to humanity. I want us to know that there is nothing we do that falls to the ground. Everything we do is recorded. Anyhow you treat people, God keeps the record. However you treat people, God keeps the record. You may bless people and they did not return the blessing. Don't worry. You may be a blessing to people and they return it with curse and abuses. Don't worry. You may be a blessing to people and they are very ungrateful. Don't worry. God rewards us. Hallelujah. He gets into the record of your name that you did this. Hallelujah. And he shall speak for us all. Hallelujah. In First Samuel chapter 30, the Bible talks about David and his men. He said they went out and by that time David was residing in Ziklag one of the cities belonging to um, the Philistines, when he ran away from Saul. David was there with his men. And the Bible said, Egyptians came and they ransacked the whole place. Amalekites, oh, oh, they came, they took everything from them. They burned down Ziklag. The Bible said in verse 4, David and his men, they wept until they had no more power to weep. Then David and his people that were with him, lifted up their eyes and wept until they had no more power to weep. But David inquired of God, will I pursue? Will I overtake? A proof that you have actually prayed is how you relate to one another. A proof that you actually pray is how you relate with one another. After David spoke to God, he prayed, should I pursue? Verse 8. And God said, pursue. If will, I, will I overtake? He said, yes, overtake. Without fear, recover all. He began his journey. He met a man in verse 11. A man that was dying by the road. The Bible said they gave him bread. They gave him water. They gave him a cluster of cake. And they revived the man. And he asked questions. That man became the GPS of their journey. When David was giving him bread, he didn't know that was the recovery of his wife and his children. When David was feeding this man, he did not know that his wife and the children will be recovered via the information this man will provide. But that act of kindness, the man began to tell him where the people came from and where they had gone to. David did not know. This time, we want to see the end from the beginning. We want to even make agreement, where is this going to end us before we do it? We want to know where it will end. David that was the act of kindness. Whether the man was a useless man or it was not his problem, let's revive him. They gave him food. They gave him water. While you are doing this to humanity, you don't know you are planting a good seed. Hallelujah. In Genesis 40, the Bible said Joseph was in prison. He met two men in the prison. He was also a prisoner. Met prisoners. He interpreted a dream of, he looked at them, verse 7. He said, why is your countenance sad? Prison is not a good place now. Is it a palace? Hallelujah. He said, and he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the world, that's in prison, of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye sadly today? So they should be smiling. <laughs> They're in prison. Somebody was in prison, but concerned about other people's happiness in the prison. And the Bible said, when he asked them, they told him, We both had a dream. And we are confused. He interpreted their dream. He did not know. In that interpretation, he was introducing himself to Pharaoh. When he was interpreting the dream, this is a man. Dream brought him into trouble. And yet he was still interpreting dreams. It was dream that took him to the pit. It was dream that made him to be sold as a slave. It was dream that landed him in Potiphar's house that eventually brought him to prison. Yet, he was still ready to interpret dream. He interpreted dream. He did not know in that interpretation, this is how we appear to the king. What we do to humanity will definitely come back to us. 
what we do with one another will definitely come back to us. He was interpreting the dream for the people. He didn't know that he was opening his doors to the palace. I don't know what you have done that you are regretting. I did this, I did that. Nobody came back. It will come back to you. And when it comes, it doesn't come back ordinary. It comes in a grand style. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give unto you. Hallelujah. Let us be kind to one another. Let us be kind to one another. Let us learn to take care of others. Romans chapter 12 verse 10. He said be kindly affectionate one to another. Be kindly affectionate one to another. Hallelujah. With brotherly love in honor preferring one another. Be kind to one another. In 2 Kings chapter 5. It starts from verse 1. The Bible introduced a great man called Nehemiah. He was a captain of the host of Syria. But the Bible said, Naaman was leprous. He was a great man. He was a captain. He was a great warrior. But yet he had a problem. The Bible introduced, there's somebody, there was a girl living in the house. Now, Naaman has brought this girl as a captive. So he's a soldier. They went to Israel. They captured people. They captured a young girl, brought her as a slave. Kept her in their house. Helping the wife. There are so many people who will be in bitterness. But this young girl, the wife of Naaman took care of the girl. There is a way you can change the heart of people. There is a way you can give treatment to people and they fall in love. This girl has every right to be bitter. Has every right to pray for them to die. They captured her as a slave. And now they are utilized. Some people were poisoning their food. She was now waiting on them in the house. The wife, that's what the Bible says in verse 2. And when she looked at it, she said, this man is a great man. This man has a problem. And said, said to the, 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 the man's wife, he said, there is a prophet in Israel by name Elisha. If only my master can see him, he will recover him of leprosy. Hallelujah. You see what kindness does? This young girl has every reason to be bitter. I'm a slave. I'm not supposed to be here. You snatched me from my family. Snatch me from, maybe they killed their father and their mother. She has every reason to be bitter, but she wasn't bitter because somebody showed her kindness. Be kind to one another. Life is not only about us, how you feel per time. Let's be kind to one another. And the people receiving help to remember that somebody did something for you. It is terrible. If I know this, people don't have problem with even giving. Some people are just afraid that this giving will become something else. Some people are not just, it's not like they don't want to help. They are afraid of how they render the help. Before it be described into something different. When you receive help, remember God is seeing us. The family had their weakness. They came, they captured you. Yes, they are done wrong. But by reason of their kindness towards her, she dropped everything that she had against them. It's a two-way thing. As love is coming, as people are showing kindness, you to retain that kindness in your heart. There are people you do good to them from, from January to December. Even for 20 years. The day they leave your sight, it looks like you never help them. It is bad. It is bad. There are people who can never speak good of those who even receive them in this country. It is bad. It is bad. It is bad. Let us be kind to one another. When this woman was giving that girl concern like her own child, she didn't know the recovery of the husband was in that process. When she was attending to her, loving her like her own child, she didn't know that would be a solution to the husband's problem. Everything we do is coming back to us. Let's be kind to one another. God keeps record. Be kind to people. Be kind to one another. Hallelujah. Be kind to one another. And when you receive kindness, let people's weakness not never appear in your mouth. The people that helped you. Some people, they stay in your house. The only thing they, they take out is how you were quarreling with your husband. But they lived in your house. The care you gave them. You did shopping for them. Nobody will hear. Ah, those people, they are smiling out. They fight every day in the house. That's the only thing. Let their kindness swallow up the weakness you saw 
If you were not close enough, you would not see that. Because they brought you in, that's why you saw that. We must be kind to one another. And let's remember, keep it, retain it. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 10 to 17, the Bible talks about the, 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 this woman. The woman says something to the husband. He said, let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set him a bed. This woman was preparing something for the man of God. She did not know that this is the same place. That platform, that bed they made will be a place, a point of resurrection for their child. They prepared a, a room, a chamber for the man of God. Elisha was passing. He said, I perceive this is a man of God. Let's prepare a place for him. They made a room. They put a bed. That was the bed that the child checked back to life on, on an evil day. When trouble came on an evil day, the boy cried, my head, my head. And he died. The Bible said the mother came, brought him, put him on the bed. The same bed he made for the man of God. When they were doing the bed, they did not know this is a resurrection point. They did not know it's a platform for restoration in the family. Child of God, let's be kind. Let's be kind. When the day of trouble came, the bed they made for the man of God became the place where the child jumped back to life. Be kind to one another. Hallelujah. Be kind to one another. The man of God was not stranded. He didn't beg them for anything. Just, she just looked, I perceive he's a man of God. I always see him passing here under the hot sun. Let me give him rest a little bit. Let us give him a place to rest. Since he has too much business in this area, when he comes, he can stay here and go and finish up his business before he goes. It became a point of testimony. Let's be kind. Hallelujah. Be kind to humanity. Serve men. Serve men. Hallelujah. It is not bad if you are used. It's better to be used and not to be used at all. A sign that God will use you is that men use you. A sign that God will use you is that men use you. A sign that God will use you is that men use you first. David was in the bush serving. When God calls you and God wants to use you, men will first use you. If you have so much willpower that I'm not going here, I'm not going, even God cannot send you. If you can't hear the voice of the men that is loud in your ears before you, then how can you hear God's voice? So a sign that God will use you is that people use you first. We are so rigid. Church, let's love one another. Let's serve one another. Hallelujah. Let's love one another. Let's serve one another. Hallelujah. Your character today is a platform for your projection. Your character today is the platform for your projection. In Genesis 24, Abraham sent his servant. He said, go get me a wife for my son Isaac. Just imagine that he didn't give this guy good treatment in the house. Just imagine, he told him, don't go here, only go to that side. The man would have just branched beside the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. He would have just branched beside the house, even go to his own family, go bring a woman. Say, let's see how we can colonize this whole family. <laughs> He just goes to his own family. Go and carry one of his uh, cousins. Say, come on. A big man is looking for a wife. Say, come and be in this family so that we can collect everything. But because, I remember one point, when Abraham was standing before God, he said, Eliezer will be my heir. So for him to even think that this guy, will, it means he had proper attention for him. Somebody can have ten children, you look for one with the best mode and character to make your heir. This one was not even his son. He was telling God, Eliezer will be my heir. That is to tell you how much love he has already shown him. That's to tell you how much. Let's be kind to people. Let's be kind to people. For your doors to be open, there must be works. Service unto God, service unto humanity. I know this is not the message some people expect sometimes. But it's the very truth and essential thing we need. Be kindly affectionate one to another. 
And don't be weary in doing good. Galatians 6 and verse 9. Don't be weary in doing good. For in due season. Hallelujah. And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So don't start and stop halfway. It is even worse to start and stop. It's better you have not started. Because you are creating so many impressions. You put people in a mode, they ask question, what did I do? Did I offend this person? Did I do this? Did I do this? Don't even start. Because when you start, continue. That's where the reward is. Hallelujah. Let us not be weary in doing good. Praise the Lord. When Eliezer went to get a wife, he prayed. He said, Lord, give me favor. Give me good speed this day. It's in verse, verse 12. And the Bible said, why he was yet praying, a damsel just came up. He said, let the lady that I will ask, please give me water. And she lowers her whatever container to give me water. He said, let it be my master's food. Oh, this young girl came. She came, came to, to draw her water. And the man said, please, can I get a drink? She said, yes, my Lord. Ah! There are some people that will insult you black and blue. She did not know in that water she was getting a husband. Not just an ordinary husband, a royalty. There are some, say, this water I struggle to carry. <laughs> Your throat go dry. Jesus told the woman, give me a drink. The woman was laughing at him. This one, this man prayed, he said, let the one that comes. There are people we see even in church, you refuse to greet. Some people greet, you don't answer. It's, that's the person that can introduce you to the person you're looking for in life. Let's be kind to one another. She didn't know giving this man water was getting herself a husband. What is water as compared to the destiny that she had? What is water? There are people, nothing, even good money is not there. We are not even talking of giving something. Greeting is not there. Church, let's be kind to one another. Some people, you don't know reasons why they will insult you. For no reason. Just looking at why are you looking at me? And they start describing you. Well, you're just looking at you did not say anything. Talk less of even making a request. They start insulting. I told us a story Papa was sharing one time. He said, A young girl met with a woman in the bus. The woman was trying to say, Please, can you go inside my daughter? I said, For what? He said, Please, I have luggage. So my luggage can stay. He said, For what? Say, Mommy, don't bring your witchcraft here. Say, Pass and go inside. The woman pleaded, the girl did not answer. I said, I, I didn't come here for you. Don't give me. The woman went in with her load. They went and dropped somewhere. They met a bike, only one bike. The bike man said, see this girl, come and let that mama sit behind with the bike. Say, for, see me and this mama, we cannot sit on the same bike. We cannot sit on the same bike. The woman pleaded, says, it's getting late, please, my daughter, let me also go home. He said, no, you and I cannot sit on this. I got here first. Say, bike man, I'm paying for the two seats. Carry me alone. And she didn't know she was going to that woman's house. The son had come from abroad. And this girl was coming to see the, the guy. And she was maltreating the mother on the road. And she went ahead, already met the guy. They were there kissing and kissing. And the woman just came. He said, who is this witch? And the girl just bowed her head. And she began to go. The guy asked her, Mama, what happened? Do you know her? He said, I met this girl in the bus. I pleaded with her. This load I have. Let me see by the door. She said, no. We met bike. Let's share the bike together. She paid for the chapter, the whole bike. That she can't sit on the same bike with me. And she want to come into my house. The girl just carried her. her she picked her shoes, her sandals. She carried her sandals on her hand. <laughs> she was going with barefoot. Let's be kind. Hallelujah. Let's be kind. Let's be good to others. Praise the Lord. Let us be kind to one another. There are many times that kindness, it plays in many ways. I've seen people who talk horrible things about their fathers, their mothers. Listen, being a Christian doesn't make you arrogant, doesn't make you a beast, an animal. Your biological father, whether they know God or not, give their honor. There are people who talk down on their mother. Their mother has a boyfriend. They are this old. They don't have respect. It's your mother. She gave birth to you. That's her business. If your gospel can reach her, let your life change her. And don't go about talking, talking, talking nonsense about them. 
There are so many people, the man standing before them is their own biological parent that has become a door to their breakthroughs in life. Papa shared another story about a, a lady that has had, I don't know how many miscarriages, whether it was 13 miscarriages. 13. She gets pregnant and never sees the baby. Gets pregnant and the, whether the pregnancy disappears or whatever. One day, Papa called her to the office. Say, go and apologize to your father. And then he said, no, me and my father were okay. Say, I just spoke with him this morning. He said, go, do what I said. Go, kneel down before your father and apologize. Say, that's what God told you. Nothing else. She went and knelt and told, said, daddy, in any way I've wronged you, forgive me. The father burst in tears. The father said, who told you? He said, apostle. Told her, he said, 25 years ago. 25 years ago, I sent you to do something. You, you, you didn't do it. I was angry. I said, you will never hear the cry of a baby. So this girl has been pregnant 13 times. This woman, she's not a woman in her 40s. 13 pregnancies, no baby. There are people, their problem is their own biological parents. And the man said, you will never hear the cry of a baby. So everything she has done ends up in futility. And thank God, after that event, now she has a child. Just we must learn, and many times we feel like okay, you're giving your life to Christ, all oh, things have passed away, behold, everything has become new. Your father is still alive, your mother is still alive. If you offend them, apologize. It doesn't matter, they are wrong. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 9, Genesis chapter 9, we can read verse 20 to 27. It's a little bit long, but that's what we're ending to pray. He said, Noah began to be an husbandman and he planted a vineyard. Continue. He said, he drank of the wine and was drunken and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, that's one of his sons. Ham was one of his sons. The father of Canaan. Canaan was his grandchild. Saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. Next verse. He said, and Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon their shoulders and went backward. So they put the garment and they were going behind not to look at their father's nakedness. Hallelujah. They don't want to look at their father's nakedness of their face. He said, and their faces were backward. So they were looking that way and they were walking this way. And they went and they covered their father. Move to the next verse. We're, we're reading out to 27. He said, Noah awoke from his wine. And knew what his younger son had done unto him. A father, even at his drunken state, is still a father. Your mother, even in her weakness, is still your mother. When you look at what they did and you make it a public thing, you are incurring a cause. He said, and he said, Cause be Canaan, a servant of servants shall you be unto his brethren. It is not Canaan that saw him. No. It was Ham. Hallelujah. So when a curse, what does that tell us? He said, curse be Canaan. It shall be a servant of servant. So when a curse is released, it is not coming for your now. It's coming for your future. The curse did not come to him. He said, your, your son, Canaan, shall be servant of servant. There are things that we are asking, why are these things like this? Why are things like that? Why is this happening like this? And we don't know those things. I want us to cry unto God. Hallelujah. Let us shape in our life going forward. Give honor to whom honor is due. Hallelujah. I'm, when I read that scripture over and over, I was asking myself, how did the man know he was drunk? How did he know? Even in his drunkest day, he's still the father. He was drunk, he was not there. And he didn't die in drunkenness. I want us to be on our feet. Nothing will shut your doors. God says the doors are open. Your doors are open. Therefore, we're going to look at anything. There could be characters. There could be habits. There could be things that have shut our doors. There are attitudes. There are ways we have offended people. Listen, there are some people, the way you spoke to, Anywhere you want to enter, if they know you are entering that place, they will come and block it. 
Have you seen that before? Because you were rude to them, some will not say anything to you. They'll just stay quiet. When you go into the north, they heard that you are in the north. You just call one man there. See that person, Maka. See that person, Maka. There are people, the way we have dealt with other people, it has made people, they have friends you don't know about. It. They have allies you don't know about. When they know you are moving from here to the next city, they call the people that are in that city. You see this person, Maka. I want us to cry out to God. Let mercy speak for us. In any way, our character has become the door that is shutting us outside. Let the mercy of God speak for us. Say, my father, my father. Lord, as I begin to pray, Lord, as I begin in to the pray, name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, every character in every me, character in me that has closed my door, that have closed my door. Let mercy speak. For Let me. mercy speak for me. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Shatala batala 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 as I begin to pray, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let the grace to serve, let God the grace to serve, and humanity, and humanity come alive in me, now. come alive in me now. Let the grace to serve, let God, the grace to serve God, and humanity, come alive in me now. In the name of Jesus, As I pray now, wind of God, blow, blow them away. Them. Are you ready? Amen. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. As I begin to pray. As I begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Anyone. Anyone. That has made themselves. That have made themselves a, a door. A door. Thereby limiting my progress. Thereby limiting my progress. Wind of God. Wind of God. Blow them away. 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 Clap your hands and pray. Rabakata labakata labakata. Ikata labakata. Ikata labakata. Ikata labakata. Ikata labakata. Ikata Shatala <laughs> 
Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Father we thank you for open doors. Thank you Jesus. Say, Father, I thank you for open doors. Father, I thank you for open doors. I walk into the open doors. I walk into the open doors. I walk into my 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 open I walk into my open doors. In Kakota Panata, at the Nebrokoto Sokoto, in Kakota Panate, I receive all the opportunities. I receive the access. In Kakota Manata, in Zokoto Zokoto. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I decree your doors are open. Amen. Doors of settlement are open. Amen. Amen. Those that are married without the fruit of the womb, you are fruitful. Amen. Doors of parenthood, you just enter now. Amen. It has been opened and you are walking into it in the name Amen. of Amen. Doors of settlement in documentation in this country is open. Amen. You just walked into it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone that was expecting, you are walking into it now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Begin to receive that which belongs to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree doors, open doors are set before you. Amen. Doors of favor. 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 Amen. I decree open doors. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Father, we give you thanks and praise. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. Amen. Just lift up your hands and begin to love him. Thank you. Father, we bless your name. Yes, Lord. Father, teach us. Spirit, lighted by the word, and with your bread of life, that's how I come my life, that's how I change my world. Thank you, my Father. Go to Katupe letter, Mata Katupe Nabadasha, break it to Badadasha. In Kakuba Lidabash, in Prakatuba Lish, I speak favor, the favor of God upon your life. Let God show you favor. Father, release favor. 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 I release favor. Release favor. I 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 release favor. Father, favor your daughter. Favor. 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 Favor.
very good things. The God of heaven, the God of our Father, the God of this commission, show himself mightily in your life. In this season, a loud testimony is coming. Father, honor your daughter. I think her works. Add it with the grace in the house. With the grace over the commission. I decree, may you receive favor. Let this be a remarkable day in your life. Let things turn around for good for you. Let your mockery cease. Let your shame cease. Let God put laughter in your mouth. Let God put a tambourine in your hand. Let give God put a praise, a song of praise in your mouth. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I decree testimony. I decree testimony. You shall dance in Jesus' name. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious mighty name. Just breathe your name. Somebody with an ear. Yeah, I don't know if it's a big person or a child. Is someone connected to us? I decree we are healed in the name of Jesus. Anything that looks like affliction cease today in the name of Jesus. I decree doors of celebration. I decree that the God of heaven show himself mighty in our lives. Show himself mighty in our family. In the precious mighty name of Jesus. Thank you awesome God. Thank you King of glory. Thank you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Uh, daughter, come. Come. Spread for you. Father, we thank you. Thank you, King of glory. I decree that you are blessed. You are highly favored. The 
God of heaven prosper your endeavors. That strong man that was standing and blocking your way when God had opened the door. Today, by reason of what we have said, what God has spoken to us, the man has been lifted. The strong woman has been lifted. The door is open and shall remain permanently open. In the name of the Lord Jesus. To everyone that has observed delay, I decree speed. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, I am that I am. Go Baratasha. I didn't see. I can see somebody. Yours, you have even seen a dream that you, you came somewhere and everywhere was lost. I decree the doors are open. The doors are open. The doors are open. The doors are open. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. I decree testimonies on every side. Spirit testimonies. In Jesus' precious mighty name we pray. And everybody say amen. amen. We are blessed. We are highly favored. Our doors are open indeed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please be seated one minute.